Hey guys, this is Doodle FM posting an update to the timing chains that I've replaced. Um, you know, I haven't had very much time to uh, record uh, much of the work that I've been doing. I've been uh, working on this 3.5 liter Nissan motor that uh, has come out of a 2006 Nissan Quest. Um, I ripped the whole motor out because uh, uh, I looked at the tensioner from the <clears throat> access uh, cover to the tensioner. It was stretched all out, so I uh, I assumed the chain was stretched all out. So I pulled the motor out, took off the cover, and uh, pretty much you got to watch the. There's a video that's right before this one where you can see what happened. But um, this one's all done. This one's all ready to go. It has a new tensioner, has a new guide. As you can see, this guide is now up against my my tensioner, and uh, it's uh, nice and snug on there. There's uh, no slack anywhere, so it's nice and tight. Um, just wanted to show you how easy it is to uh, match up the tick marks on the sprockets with the painted chain links on the chains. Um, there's three chains um, for each of the um, um, secondary chains that are in the back. You can see that there's two uh, bronze colored chains and coordinating with that there's two um, small tick marks on that sprocket one for each of those chains. Now uh, don't get it confused with these other two elongated tick marks that are on the top. Let's see if I can zoom in. Uh, it doesn't work all that well but you can kind of see that. My uh, This is off a of phone so the video is not all that great. Um, so uh, on this side of your mortar which would be the left side because you're looking at it on the left side those two chain links should match up with those two tick marks on the camshaft on the sprocket on the other side this is where it can get confusing because those two same tick marks are actually right up here on the top um, they're nowhere near where they are on that other sprocket and uh, the chain links are matched up with the elongated tick marks on this side so they're kind of backwards and uh, it's actually the way it's supposed to be so if uh, you do the job make sure you uh, what I would do is I would take some pictures of the before you take everything apart that way when you, when you do take everything apart if you uh, forget something or uh, the uh, sprockets move on you you can uh, see where uh, look at your picture and see where they were at before another thing you can do is uh, I didn't have to do this because I replaced all the chains and I kinda had an idea of already what I was gonna do but I still bought some uh, um, this uh, parts marker um, it's liquid based so it goes on very well on uh, any of these parts um, so you, what you can do is you can kind of mark before you take off your chain you can mark exactly where uh, your tick marks are at and where your old chain is at you can mark uh, everything I mean don't be afraid to use the marker um, it's not going to mess up anything inside the motor um, and just you know put marks wherever uh, sprockets and chains line up and and uh, if you really want to get into it, you can uh, actually count each one of the links across each section from the, you know, starting from these colored chain links. Um, but you really don't have to. As, as you can see here, the blue um, chain link on the main chain is matched up with the tick mark that's right below it on the sprocket. Um, there's also this uh, nice long dashed line. and there is no other dashed line on this uh, sprocket 
And um, same thing on this side. The blue chain link is matched up with uh, um, that tick mark there. And there's also the dash line that comes across. And on the crankshaft, we have the bronze colored chain link mark matched up with that tick mark on the crank as well. So that's how your chains, chains should be matched up. Um, there's also a sprocket that sits behind this um, that you can't see right now, but let's see if we can get my camera right back in there. You can actually see, yeah, it looks like you might be able to see it. Um, see that bronze chain, uh, that bronze chain link? Well, there's a tick mark right next to it. So that indicates that it's lined up the right way. And I'm going to turn my phone upside down so I can get the camera side of my phone in, in here. And there's that chain link. And there's a tick mark that goes with it as well on that sprocket. Let me turn this back over. Sorry. Probably gets all messed up um, with you guys watching the video. But, um, yeah, so that's the uh, chains. That's uh, the way they're supposed to be lined up, um, and uh, they come painted. The chain links come painted, so uh, or marked, so you can't uh, really mess it up. Um, just make sure to set your motor on top dead center. Um, you'll have some um, indications on your crankshaft pulley or harmonic balancer, and uh, that'll line up with uh, a mark on your uh, uh, timing chain case. Um, you can look at some other videos on how to do that. Um, I'm not going to be able to show you just because I've got that case taken off and I don't even know where I left my uh, my harmonic balancer, my pulley, somewhere around here. Anyways, um, I went ahead and did the tensioner, this guide. I did the water pump and uh, um, I, I was actually at the dealership and uh, while I was talking to them they had it's not a kit but they have a parts list of what needs to be replaced and they'll sell that to you because they know exactly what's going on with these motors um, so uh, what was not included was this guide and it's actually fine after you look at it and uh, this guide on the top which was also fine that was not on the parts list what was on the parts list was um, just the plastic clip that's right here and the plastic clip right here um, but not the tensioners these tensioners are fine um, and the reason for that and after speaking to one of the techs well let's see this first you guys can see right through that plastic and uh, that chain it has almost eaten right through this plastic clip that goes in that tensioner. Um, I spoke to one of the Nissan techs. He said that uh, they know when these go out because when these go out, you get a whining noise. Um, so that's when they know that they need to replace these. And that's why this comes in that uh, parts list. Um, you know, it's kind of like a kit. It's really just a parts list, and they, they know what to go grab and what you need um, when you're going to be doing this this work. But, um, yeah, so uh, that's just an update as far as uh, what, I've, uh, what I've done. So let's hope everything works out. Another thing the tech said to do was make sure to avoid the... Um, jumping time uh, as uh, many have done and he even said that some of the techs it happens to some of the techs at Nissan um, to avoid that what they're doing now is after they do this um, complete replacement they'll make sure to button everything up once it's in the car um, they put everything back together they make sure everything is connected so that when they first turn the key on that ignition it has to start they do not try to start the car or turn the key more than once. So uh, he says make sure to have everything connected. Don't, don't leave anything off that will keep it from 
not starting that very first time. So uh, it looks like that's going to be the trick as far as keeping the timing from jumping. And uh, hopefully that advice helps some of you guys out there and hopefully it helps me out keeping the timing from jumping on me and uh, having to avoid to uh, re redo all this and maybe some damage to uh, some of the valves or heads. So uh, good luck to you guys. Um, and check out my uh, previous video about this so you guys can get a little bit more information on uh, what you guys need to be doing. Alright, thank you.